Hello everyone, welcome back to the class of macroeconomics. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about investment. So to begin with, we are going to address two main topics in today's lecture. We want to ask how investment decisions are made and how can the investment decisions are affected. So the outline for today's lecture are as follows. We will talk about the procedure from the investment to the output which is include the production process. So then we are going to talk about the production process in detail. We are going to talk about the equation that quantify this process, which includes the AK model and the Cobb douglas production function. And then we are going to talk about and components inside the production function, which is called the productivity. And we describe how it changed by talking about something called supply shocks. And then we are going to talk about the Cobb Douglas production in detail. And then we are going to talk about the issue of the capital and its accumulation. And then we are going to talk about investment decision and the factor that affects the investment decision. When talking about investment, I want you to think about the investment in the first period that when the business started and also afterwards. So when the business just got started, once you have the investment and then that will become the capital. For example, you invest and then you buy machines. And then once you have capital, you put it into the production process and then you are going to produce goods, which is our output in here. Then how about the investment for the second period? The investment of the second period will again become the capital, but then the capital you put into the production process is more than the investment you made at the second period because the capital in the first period, in fact, can be used again in the second period. So then after depreciation, the first period capital can also be part of the capital you put into the production process again and then produce the goods. So in here, we want to talk about investment decisions. And so what we want to do is that we want to focus on the capital, how it is accumulated. And then we want to talk about the production process such that we will be able to know how much we want to invest because the ultimate goal is that we want to produce goods, consume it, and then that will become our utility. So then what is the production process? Well, when there is a production process, there will always be inputs. The input in here can be the land, the capital, the labor, and entrepreneurship. So investment is only about a part of the input. That is, the investment becomes capital, and the capital will be something that we put into the production process. But that is not the whole thing we put into the production process. So then once we have an equation to characterize this production process, which is something we are going to talk about later, we are going to have some output. In here, the output of the production process will be the goods that is produced. So what are the examples of the equations that characterize the production process? In here, I'm going to give you two examples. The first equation that I want to introduce to characterize the production process is called AK model. The AK model is written as Y equals AK. The Y is the output, A is the technology, and K is the capital. So this model is a very simple version of the production function that characterizes the production process. You may say, hey, that is not at all realistic. Because when we have a machine, we, we still need at least a person or someone to turn it on. So then we need labor for sure. But then you do not even put labor into the production function. It's not right at all. Well, you can think about that we assume the labor equal one such that you don't need to put it in there, but it is hidden somewhere in the model. But the good thing of this model is that it only has one factor of production, which will make the analysis much easier. After looking at the simplest version of the model that characterizes the production process, the second example I want to talk about is the Cobb Douglas production function. This production function is often used in a lot of the macro models. 
So later on, we will look at the detailed features of the Kopf Douglas production function. But before we do that, let's look at the equations. We said that the y, which is the output, uh, equals the a k theta and then l to the power of 1 minus theta. In here, the a is the technology, the k is capital, l is the labor that you put into the production process. The parameter theta is the capital share. And later on, we will tell you why this parameter can be named as capital share. And the other one is 1 minus theta, which is called the labor share. And again, later on, I'll show you why it has such a name. But before we do that, uh, we, I want to tell you the number for the theta. In general, we believe that the theta equal one third, and that is based on the US data that in the past, the capital share is roughly equal a third. In fact, I myself also do research about Taiwan, and uh, it turned out that I also find that a third is a good approximation for Taiwan's capital share. So up to this point, you may notice that when we are talking about the production function that describing the production process, we always have an A in front of all the factor of production we put into the production process. So now we want to talk about this A in detail. So the A are the productivities. Describe a level of the technology. This level can sometimes be higher, sometimes be lower, and that will be associated with a temporary change along the long time trend. On the other hand, this level can also persistently become higher than higher, then that will be something more like the technological advances, and that will be a permanent change. So in here, we want to define something called productivity shock. It is a change in an economy's production function. And we also have a name for such a productivity shock. We call it the supply shock. And in here, I want to emphasize that such a change is more associated with a temporary change. So then now let's draw the production function again in the graph. We have the vertical axis that is the output and the curve in here can be characterized, for example, by the Cobb Douglas production function. So we have both the capital and labor as the factor of production we put into the production process. So now we want to define another term that is called a positive supply shock. So when the supply shock is positive, it means that the a, which is the label of the technology, somehow got higher, or given that it is temporarily, you can think about it as that the production efficiency somehow got higher for some time. Then because the production efficiency or the label technology is higher temporarily, it associated with a positive increase in the level of A. Because of that, given that the A becomes larger, then it means that the output will become higher. So then we can write an example like this, that is we add the, an additional amount to the original level of the A, and then so the Y is higher. In graph, we know that it will look like this. On the contrary, we also have another term that is called a negative supply shock. Given that it is negative, it is the opposite of the positive. So then it tells us that the A falls, which implies that the changes in A will be negative. When the changes in A is negative, it means that the A is lower, so then the total output will be less. So then in the example, we have it like the A plus delta A, but in here, given that the delta A is negative, so it means that the new level of the A becomes lower. So then in graph, we will see that it will be below the original production function. So then a common feature of the plot tell us that when there is either the supply, positive supply shock or the negative supply shock, Anyhow, when there is no input, that is zero capital input and zero labor input, then there will 
both start at the point of the origin, even though there is a shock. That is because when there is no factor of inputs, then regardless of the level of the technology, you cannot produce anything anyway. So that is the key point that when the economy faces a positive or a negative supply shock, the starting point at the origin is still fixed. It is not a parallel shift of the curve. So then we emphasize that the positive supply shock and the negative supply shock refer to a temporary change in the level of the production efficiency. Then if the shock is permanent, we have a name for that. Such an increase is mostly with the technological advances. So then a lot of time when the shock is permanent, and in general, it will be a uh, increase in the production efficiency, then we call it the technological advances. And a lot of time, it will result in growth.